Today's random object. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And click the bell so you'll be notified of upcoming videos. The chief cultic center of Ra was Lunu, the place of pillars, later known to the Ptolemaic kingdom as Heliopolis, and today located in the suburbs of Cairo. He was identified with the local sun god Atum. As Atum, or Atum Ra, he was reckoned the first being and the originator of the Anadian, the Nine, consisting of Shu and Tefnut, Geb and Nut, Osiris, Set, Isis, and Nephthys. The holiday of the receiving of Ra was celebrated on May 26th in the Gregorian calendar. Ra's local cult began to grow from roughly the second dynasty, establishing him as a sun deity. By the fourth dynasty, pharaohs were seen as Ra's manifestation on earth, referred to as sons of Ra. His worship increased massively in the fifth dynasty when Ra became a state deity and the pharaohs had specially aligned pyramids, obelisks, and sun temples built in his honor. The rulers of the 5th dynasty told their followers that they were sons of Ra himself and the wife of the high priest of Heliopolis. These pharaohs spent much of Egypt's money on sun temples. The first pyramid texts began to arise, giving Ra more and more significance in the journey of the pharaoh through the Duat, or underworld. During the Middle Kingdom, Ra was increasingly affiliated and combined with other chief deities, especially Amun and Osiris. At the time of the New Kingdom of Egypt, the worship of Ra had become more complicated and grander. The walls of the tombs were dedicated to extremely detailed texts that depicted Ra's journey through the underworld. Ra was said to carry the prayers and blessings of the living with the souls of the dead on the sunboat. The idea that Ra aged with the sun became more popular during the rise of the New Kingdom. Many acts of worship included hymns, prayers, and spells to help Ra and the sunboat overcome Apep. The rise of Christianity in the Roman Empire put an end to the worship of Ra.